Hello, Pedro here. This is a quick rundown on Polypath Tangent, a Houdini digital asset that I created to generate tangent vectors on polypaths. Usually for this, I use the Polyframe SOP and it does have some nice options. So for example, I can use here the style two edges or first edge and allows me to sort of control the direction of the tangent vector. Now, I wanted something that was a bit more specific for uh, polypaths. Of course, there's a, a lot of useful options in here also for closed meshes. But so let's look into some of the things that went through my mind when, when doing this new asset. So you'll notice, for example, that the polyframe uh, direction, the flow of the vectors goes from point 0.8 to point 0.0. So from the last to the first. And in my case, I wanted to have the other way around. So have the flow go from the first to the last. Another thing is that on closed polygons, you'll notice that polyframe will sort of have the directions pointing in. It's almost like the uh, direction that it uses is like pointing at the midpoint between the two neighbor points. And so this is this can be useful, but I was looking for something that would behave a little bit more like the behavior that uh, was seen on the polygon curve. So for example, in my with my asset, this is the sort of direction that it, it is created. Now let's look at some of the options. So here I have on the asset neighbor bias. And so what is neighbor bias? Well, these directions are generated, taking in consideration a, a direction, a flow direction. And so in this case, from the first to the last. And so let's say I'm evaluating point one. I have two directions in it. The direction that is uh, created with the previous neighbor and the direction that is created with the next neighbor. Now, the neighbor bias is basically a uh, a spherical interpolation between these two. So basically, I'm going to choose if I want to use the previous or the next direction. Of course, the the default value is 0.5, so that I have a bisector angle, so a mid direction between the two. So this will be zero, this will be one. So if I come here and I go up and down with the slider, you'll you'll get uh, what it's what it does actually. Now, the other option, the weight bias, it basically uses the distance uh, between two to the neighbors to say, okay, this neighbor is more important than the other. And so, for example, at 0.5, it means that both neighbors are important. But if I put this to zero, it will work as the, the neighbor with the smallest distance or the short, shortest distance will be more important. So for example, if I come here and I start to pull zero closer to one, the direction between those two will be more important than the direction that goes from three to zero. And on the same account, if I put zero closer to three, the direction between three and zero will be more important. Now, if I put the slider to one, it's the other way around. It's going to be the neighbor that is most far away that's going to be more important one. So for example, if I put zero closer to one, then the direction between three and zero will be more dominant. And on the same account, if I put this closer to three, the direction between one and zero will be more dominant. So it's about choosing what type of weighting of bias you want uh, go, to go on. Now, the of course, even though a uh, polyframe has this flow from the last to the first, I can also have the same thing here just by clicking on flip. And so this, this will work just like polyframe. And basically for tangency, these are the options. I can either choose to output it or not. What's the name? At that's it. Now I decided that since there were other things that I found when building the asset that I could output, so I decided I decided to also have the option to output the space. And so what is what is the space? Well, it's basically the distance to the neighbor points. In this case, it's sort of like an average. And so this this parameter here will control that uh, at point five it will be an average between the two neighbor between the two neighbors distance, but at zero it will use the shortest neighbor distance, and at one it will output the longest neighbor distance, and so that will go here into space, and this can be used. For example, let's say that I change the name here to say p scale, and let's say I put here this one and I reset the changes. And let's say that I put this into a copy to points. 
And with that, automatically you can see that the spheres were scaled so that they accommodate with the distance to their neighbors. So if I, let's say, pass through this, you notice that they intersect, but with that p scale, they, they adapt. And same way, if I increase the number of sides of the circle, you see that uh, the spheres are scaled accordingly. Of course, I can also move the uh, the points of, of the, the circle, and you can see some changes going on based on uh, the uh, the space attribute, or in this case, p scale. Now, of course, I can change here the bias. Maybe if I want to guarantee that there are no intersections, but you know, you can you can uh, you can see that there's there can be some application for this. Now, the other uh, attribute that I output is called uh, curvature and curvature is basically in this case like a deviation value so for example uh, let's say that i have uh, i basically do the, the dot product of these two vectors and so there's a range of values that can come from that so let's say that the uh, the next edge actually looks like this so the vector from it will look the same as the previous well then the dot product of this uh, will be uh, will be one now on the other hand if the next edge goes in the opposite direction than the uh, previous edge it will mean that i will have a vector that it's on the opposite direction and the dot product will be minus one so i have this range from minus one to one and i decided to change the range from zero to one and so it acts like a, a deviation value so at zero there's no deviation in direction it has the same direction as the previous but at one it it's completely deviated and has the opposite direction and so for example you can see that if i let's say grab here let's say i'm going to look at point seven and so i'm going to activate the curvature output and so you can see here at point seven at the moment i have uh, 0.39 but let's say that i move 0.8 closer to six well i'm going to have a curvature value that is going to be uh, close to one now on the other hand if i make 0.8 to make here this flat line with seven and six i will have the curvature value going close to zero so that's it. Uh, these, these are the, uh, the options, the outputs of the asset. Uh, the only thing that I would like to add is that I added some control using attributes and these are exemplified here and these two attribute triangles. So these uh, will override the UI values. This is an experimentation. I'm waiting for people to let me know if this, this is good or bad, uh, if, 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 it, uh, if it has a big overhead or not. But so basically you can see here that all of these, so if I come here to this, uh, this parameter, it's called 10 slurp. And if in a point uh, wrangle, I have 10 slurp, attribute i can override the ui per point and so for example if i activate this you'll notice that i can change this value here and we can see the changes uh, going on and of course i can for example put a random value for example i can put random and use the uh, point index and that will give me a random uh, neighbor bias per point so in this case it's it's it goes uh, to one, uh, in this case, it goes to zero, etc. And all of these attributes, either point or primitive, have the same name and data type has the UI parameters that they are overriding. So this is it. Let me know what you think. Cheers.